I give to you the capacitive or the capacitor step down transformer. Uh, it took me a while to figure it out. I was working on it last night and uh, about for a week beforehand. Um, and I've got here an ultra simplified circuit that uh, can hold back the power of a car battery. 36 amp hour, 12 volt battery. I've got here a little motor which is connected into the circuit and that that's it. It only works on a single line so I've got lead going from the positive to the motor and the other lead going from the negative of the diode and the negative of the capacitor which are connected in parallel by the back wire here and the positive goes back to the negative of the battery. So it puts it in series, and then puts the output in parallel. Because when you put a capacitor in series with, let's say, a motor, it will run for a short period of time, then completely stop. Because the capacitor fills up and is able, voltage-wise, to push back on the battery and stop the current from flowing. Uh, with this setup, it continues to run and it also runs only roughly at six volts so that's the circuit again ultra simple sorry about the shaky hands so i've got a, a multimeter it's set on the 20 volts range for what it can do show up that the battery puts out So 12.14 volts. Uh, I'm going to put the positive back up there. The positive is fitted in, and sorry about this. I'm a bit of a not very good with uh, just one hand. I'm going to connect the multimeter now to the back end of the <coughs> the output of this uh, step down transformer the capacitive step down transformer sorry so it will show the voltage going across the motor <coughs> yeah I'm a bit, uh, a bit ill <laughs> and me uh, so I'm going to connect the negative sorry about the glare I'm going to connect the negative to the top. Because of the vibration of the motor, it's not quite <laughs> doing it right, I guess. But as you can see, it's only roughly about 5.28 volts to 7 volts. I'm going to shove that in there and grab that motor. There we are. You can see the motors drain the capacitors. Which we need to study. And uh, obviously if I connected such a small motor to the car battery, it would go ballistic and burst into flames. Doing that. Actually, um, when I built the circuit, I built two of them, so one on the uh, left and one on the right, but that didn't work, so obviously last night I figured out that it's only actually one circuit, so this now has, I'm about to drop the camera one second, uh, this has a potential to run AC through it, if there was another circuit on this side, the alternating current would obviously flow through the capacitors in a way that would go through it, and the other part of the current would flow to the source itself, or the output, sorry. The, the the reason why I just said that is um, I noticed if I had the circuit connected 
onto the positive side and the negative going straight to the motor that drop you saw with the first happens but in a positive way so it gains voltage on the other side uh, this one it appeared to lose it but has now steadied back up to 5.8 and drops down again. So I guess there's something happening there that makes it regulate itself. It will drop down and climb back up to the 5.8 something. Yeah, it works. Step down transform, I'm gonna load the motor. There they are. I've stopped the motor dead, it's only showing two volt. So it shows a nice, reasonably steady output, running directly from a car battery. Aha! Uh -huh. That's something I actually wanted to show, sorry about my little aha, uh -huh. it's a bit weird, but... Uh, as you can see, the, the capacitors have now gone up to the 10 volts. The battery has 12, this shows 10, roughly 11 volts. Now, as soon as you connect the load, that 10 volts will drop down to the, the half amount, the series amount. Uh, I mean, in other words, 5 volts. So that's why it was a little less than the 6 that I was expecting, obviously, because the capacitors take off 2 volts from the source. So it would actually come as 10.5 uh, 10 or something, which that one had, uh, sorry, 5.5. So that one had 5.8 and it was going to drop down to 5.5. I, I actually just woke up. <laughs> yeah, with no load, the circuit would show 10 volts or a couple of volts less than what the actual source is. And when you connect the load, it will instantly drop down to the expected amount. And it won't blow anything up and it will work perfectly fine. circuit again. Thanks for watching. It should prove a very, very, very useful circuit. Let's say if you have a wind turbine or a solar panel, you can step down the current of it, uh, step down the voltage. You can put these in uh, parallel again, or more series or more parallel, one of the two, which means I can collect a higher charge or indeed divide the voltage. I could put 100 volts through it because uh, they're in series, each one would hold 50 volts and that would go out to half the circuit but if I had another capacitor so on and so on, I could divide the voltage in, you know, four capacitors to quarter the output and uh, that's what I'm replacing this limited one size fits not all part right. again, thanks for watching have a nice day.